AHA, PHA, BHA. We got some new letters in town, PDRN. Not an exfoliant, but rather a trending Korean ingredient we're gonna talk about in today's video. It's actually not the first time I've talked to you guys about PDRN, but maybe you're not making the connection because a while ago I did a video on Kim Kardashian getting a salmon sperm facial where she had salmon sperm injected into her face. Watch that video. PDRN comes up there if you are more intrigued. But we're gonna be talking about not injecting it into your face today, but rather applying it to the skin in the form of a topical product. So I will be talking to you guys about the VT PDRN Essence 100. I bought this several months ago. I have been trying it out. So I'll tell you, is it worth all of the hype? Um, all right, but what is PDRN? PDRN stands for polydeoxyribonucleotides, small fragments of DNA. And the whole salmon sperm thing has to do with the fact that for the most part, these are being isolated from salmon sperm. Yes, they are. What is the reason for injecting this stuff into skin or applying it to skin? Well, it's thought to offer a wide array of benefits for different pathways in your skin for healing and recovery. Specifically, its mechanism of action is that it is thought to work as an adenosine A2A receptor agonist. You're like, okay, great. More letters. This essentially suggests that it can have modulatory effects on tissue regeneration, wound healing pathways, have anti-inflammatory effects, stimulate fibroblasts to produce collagen, reduce oxidative stress, all of the things that one would be seeking in some sort of anti-aging skincare product, right? To help repair damaged skin from all the environmental aggressors that prematurely ages our skin, like UV pollution, and also to help support reducing inflammation, irritation, soothing the skin, helping ultimately to improve elasticity. If all of this sounds too good to be true, you would not be too far off base, all right? But there is actually some science behind PDRN, not a ton, most, most, most of the science that we have on this technology comes from in vitro type work, cells in a dish, maybe some human skin models, maybe even an animal model. But the human data, like actually putting it on human skin, whether it be applied topically in the form of a cream, serum, an essence, a toner, whatever type of product, or straight up injected, still really, really, really in its infancy. Probably one of the most intriguing, compelling uses of PDRN is not for anti-aging, it's for healing stubborn diabetic foot ulcers. Diabetic ulcers and diabetic wounds are so challenging to manage. There are clinics staffed by dermatologists, surgeons, whose sole day is filled with managing diabetic wounds. That is, that, that's what their clinic does. Diabetic ulcers, okay? Go to school for a long, 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 long time. And you can fill a, not just a day, not just a week, but a career solely on taking care of these ulcers. They are that involved, tricky to heal. There is a clinical trial using PDRN derived from salmon DNA on diabetic foot ulcers. Compared to placebo, there was faster healing, faster reepithelialization, meaning the skin coming together. I mean, really, really compelling just looking at this study. Great to see, it really is promising. However, in this study, they were not applying it as a cream, a serum, a toner, in essence. They were injecting it in into the surrounding wound area to deliver these compounds, which in theory help the wounds to heal by having an anti-inflammatory effect, stimulating fibroblasts, and these different regenerative healing pathways via the adenosine A2A receptor agonist action. Why are we putting it on our face though? If we don't have a diabetic foot ulcer on our face, what is the point? What is the point? Why are we taking a really cool study on a challenging health problem, medical disease entity, and being like, shoot, that must be good for wrinkles and fine lines. Yeah, it is a huge, huge, huge hand wave to think injecting salmon sperm into your face is going going to really translate to anti-aging. And so in Korea, apparently in different spas, this is a popular treatment modality. It's kind of made its way here. And so people are interested in it. And I, I've got to tell you, there really is not good research to support this. Not to say that it couldn't work, but it is good to remain skeptical. I'm skeptical of the aesthetics world. You know, it is not always research-based, okay? It's not always evidence-based. So there are a variety of ways people deliver PDRN in these different aesthetic treatments. It might be through microneedling. It might be through um, laser-assisted delivery. However, a lot of times things
things that are microneedled into the skin or delivered via a laser, yes, they can appear to diminish the appearance of wrinkles, have an anti-aging effect. But a big question mark is, is all of that just inflammation and fluid retention in the area? Is it truly remodeling collagen? Because if you notice with a lot of things like this, whether it be PDRN, which again, not a lot of research on, or on PRP is another one that I'm always like, uh, okay, if you say so, you have to keep getting it in order to maintain these alleged results. And there's really not good clinical data on what the actual biologic effects are of doing this on the skin as far as improving collagen or modulating inflammation. It's, it's really very loose, loosey-goosey, that it really becomes a big, big, big swath of gray. There is a study that some people will bring up. It's not a study, it's a case report. A case report of a 43-year-old man with atrophic acne scars. He had ice pick scars, box scar scars, and rolling scars. And so here's what they did. They did blunt cannula subcision. They did hyaluronic acid filler. They did radiofrequency microneedling. They did TCA cross, all of which are evidence-based treatment interventions for atrophic scars. Check out my videos on these treatments for atrophic scars because I have a video on every single thing we just talked about for atrophic scars, okay? If you've got box scar, ice pick, um, depressed scars, you need to watch those videos because we really talk about th that there. Oh, but they also applied PDRN, okay? They applied PDRN and mic drop. Guess what else the guy was applying? 0.05% retinoic acid, okay, duh. We already know that improves collagen, wrinkles, fine lines, can help to a certain extent, although not drastic, improve the appearance of depressed scars. 4% niacinamide, great for any surface irregularity, and you guessed it, sunscreen uh, to protect and allow for optimal healing because UV rays suppress healing. After 10 days, this guy had flattening and disappearance of ice pick scars, box scar scars, and had some elevation of the rolling scars. And people are trying to say all this was because of the PDRN they threw in there into the mix. Talk about gaslighting. Talk about gaslighting. You're telling me it wasn't the subcision, it wasn't the HA filler, it wasn't the radiofrequency micro needling. It wasn't the TCA cross. Topically, you, you're ignoring niacinamide, you're ignoring sunscreen, you're ignoring tretinoin, and you're pointing your finger at PDRN. If you sat down in someone's kitchen and they handed you a chicken salad sandwich they had just made you, and then they left, and you ate the chicken salad sandwich, you were like, oh my gosh, that is delicious. I have to make this myself. How can I go about figuring out how to make this? And rather than digging through their recipe box, instead, you come across their grocery receipt and you see on there, okay, chicken, mayonnaise, celery, and oh, Fruit Loops. And you get all that and you're like, yep, the Fruit Loops must be what brings this all together. Like, you, do you see the madness here? So really not, not anything scientific that we can hang our hats on as far as use in human skin, other than we need to be studying this more for diabetic ulcers, for sure, for sure, and for other chronic wounds, pressure ulcers. I would love to see that um, being done. Can it be helpful for improving flap graft survival? But just put it in in a cream and smearing it on your face are the ingredients is the pea, are the are those little fragments of DNA maybe they have a chance of getting into the skin but are they going to go where they need to go bind where they need to bind and have clinically meaningful impacts above and beyond just moisturizing the skin we don't know this is a big question mark I always have with a lot of product claims around anti-aging they latch on to the positive aspects anti-inflammatory stimulates collagen da 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 da, da. but there's there's really no mention of the possibility of off-target unwanted effects. Are there any off-target consequences of using PDRN that have not been established? Who knows? All in all, I'm highly, highly, highly doubtful that these skincare products with PDRN do anything above and beyond moisturize the skin. So let's talk about the VT PDRN Essence 100. So this is a little unique. Remember I told you the limited research we have on actual humans plus the in vitro lab model based stuff is all done using um, PDRN extracted from salmon. If we don't have to involve animals, it's a win-win. So they use PDRN isolated from Panax ginseng, so a plant-based PDRN. There is some in vitro studies, cells in a dish, human skin model type stuff, not actual people suggesting that, yeah, this can hit similar targets that the salmon stuff does, but there's no actual clinical data on it. So it's like already the PDRN thing is taking multiple steps down from reality, okay? Here is the downward spiral 
into delusion of PDRN. First, you have a reality, and that is salmon-derived PDRN shows promise when introduced via injection to a diabetic foot ulcer for healing diabetic foot ulcers. Injecting salmon-derived PDRN for anti-aging benefit, purely anecdotal at this point, no good clinical trials. Applying salmon-derived PDRN to human skin for anti-aging benefit, nothing there. Then you get to PDRN from a plant, and you really don't have any clinical data to back that up, but um, they put it in there. Now, I've been trying this out and I would be lying to you guys if I said I do not love this product. It's actually really, really good. Ignore the ignore the PDRN, okay? Who, I don't believe the PDRN in this is doing jack squat. I don't think it's anti-aging me. I don't think it is necessarily delivering anything above and beyond. Maybe it's helping a little bit with moisture retention, but it's a really nice moisturizer, okay? This is a really nice moisturizer, in my opinion, after personal use. I, I've rather enjoyed it and would consider repurchasing it even though it was a whopping $32 for one ounce of this stuff. I think the reason I like it so much is that it has a polyglucuronic acid, which is a polysaccharide that's super hydrating and can have film forming properties to reduce transepidermal water loss. So it really gives the skin this nice hydrated, snappy recoil of a, what appears to be improved elasticity. It's got niacinamide, an evidence-based ingredient for dark spots, redness, the moisture barrier, anti-aging, and it has ceramides. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, niacinamide, ceramides, and a humectant. Didn't you just describe 99.99999% of moisturizers out there? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So if you want to believe in PDRN, you know, it, it, that's a belief system. Not rooted in science that applying PDRN, let alone from Panex ginseng, does anything. So that, that's where we're at with this product. Yeah, I'm at the 18 minute and 41 second, 42 second mark in filming this video. Hopefully I cut it down enough so that you guys haven't suffered that long. But all that to say, this is another niacinamide ceramide uh, humectant containing moisturizer. Yeah. The performance, the finish on my skin, I really have liked it. I, I would gladly use this again, buy it again. It gives the skin this nice, healthy, radiant glow. Niacinamide does that. Niacinamide really works well for my skin. And polyglucuronic acid, polysaccharides that are very hydrating and film forming really help with moisture retention and give the skin a nice, luminous, radiant, bouncy glow. A little goes a long way. It has really good spread on the skin. It's uh, kind of like a thin lotion. And so I used it as like a final step in my nighttime skincare routine. And I, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I have zero complaints about it other than I would not marry myself to these PDRN claims. Like I wouldn't be surprised if they removed the PDRN from this and they snuck in some other trending ingredient in another year once people have forgotten about PDRN. And that's that, you know, I think brands, they, they have to sell a story to you. And they can't just be like, we got another ceramide, niacinamide face cream. That's really good. Doesn't sound as jazzy as vegan salmon sperm. Sign me up. And then you get a celebrity who injects it into their face and, you know, and it's a trending ingredient in Korea. And all of a sudden the U.S. audience is like, take my money. All that to say, I really, really like this product. Now, get a lot of questions about their VT Riedel shop with the spicules in it. So watch my video about the spicules, but go in just hearing my commentary. Don't get emotional. I get a lot of emotional comments in that video. Video. A lot of people's feelings are hurt by, by what I have to say in that video. So watch it out. Watch that one next if you're interested. It is one of my more controversial videos I have found of the years. So check that one out next. I'll put it on the end slate, but drop a comment below. What, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of PDRN? Has it been a game changer for you? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.